Good evening and welcome. Simon Spruce, first in the house. Good evening to you. Good evening, Karen Evans, John Griffins, Jonathan Wakefield, Sean Raymond, Christopher, not the tables, Carlos, Paul Jarvis, and Graham Allison. So, what would you like to talk about tonight? The state of the economy? The uh, American elections? Or bloody dog training. Right, I'm ready. Questions. Fire away. It's been a very, very wet week. That's all I can say to you. A very, very wet week. Evening, Matt Crew, Martin Lawrence, Christopher Hartley, and Karen Murphy. Um, what's been happening with me this week? Uh, getting wet, followed by getting wet. Uh, lots and lots of people asking questions. Asking for, well, I think the, the main thing that people are asking me lately is, can they pick my brains? Well, sometimes they pickle my brains. I don't know about pick my brains. And that's because... We get asked the same question time and time again. My cocker is making noise. How can I stop my cocker making noise? And it's one of them unfortunate things, isn't it? That the genetics of the cocker and the breeding, because they're a popular dog, people are putting any dog to any dog, and a lot of these dogs have got noise. And unfortunately, you don't start seeing it until you take your dog on a shoot. And that's where, well done, take that idiot off, well done. Um, and that's where you uh, you start to see the problem where it escalates because on, the dog's under pressure sitting on the, on the peg. And someone said to me, the dog's not too bad off the lead, but on the lead, it's unbelievable. And most dogs are, if you have to keep them on the lead, they just can't switch off. And it's a matter of teaching the dog to switch off, but there's not a lot you can do about it. That's the whole point. If you end up with a dog, well done, Claire, uh, Karen. Um, just just delete him completely, eh? How about that? Let's have a look there. Look. How about that? Um. Good evening, Kevin Fielding. How are you? All right, Kev? Um, so, any questions? Anybody got anything they would like to ask me this evening? Last night, I was on. I was asked to come on live with Jonas Black. He was talking about flattening dogs with e-collars. All because of certain videos that are going around the internet at the moment. A uh, guy thinking he get instant results. And that's what's going to get the e-collar banned. It's as simple as that. And at the end of the day, if we don't talk about these tools that we use and the corrections that we use, then it is going to get banned. It's as simple as that. And we need to stand up, out beaten tomorrow, weather looks crappy again. Tell me about it. Good evening, William. Um, <clears throat> tell me about it, Karen. Weather looks crappy all week. And uh, next week it's supposed to be going colder, but this week... Not too good. Good evening, John Wilson. That's a nice little um, picture of your Billy that I put up on Patreon from your artist friend from up north. Really nice quality. So, what would you like to talk about, anyone? Anybody would like to talk about dog training? Anybody want to talk about dog training? Any questions? That's what we're here for. Live feed tonight. Questions. We're looking forward to a sit down with you and Big Stevie. Is it is this something we can look forward to, too? Uh, I think what you've got to understand, Paul Cro Crocker, is Big Stevie's got autism. And he struggles a little bit in front of the camera. And sometimes um, I try and put a story across for everybody with the internet, when, uh, with the films, and, and, and tell the story. And... Stevie can train a dog to a good standard, 
for obedience and, and handling. And so we didn't need to touch on that subject much, so we touched on the hunting. But at the end of the day, if he comes across in the interview a little bit flustered or a little bit, not embarrassed, but um, out of his comfort zone, there's no point in putting it up. And I've been looking at stuff and watching it, and I thought, well, I want to put up stuff that is positive and everyone understands. And we had some long discussions and we had some long talks, but not everything gets put on the internet because um, it has to come across right and it has to be um, fluent. Uh, and I think what Big Stevie was doing is because of his autism, I think he was keeping reasonably quiet. And perhaps I would have preferred him to give me his opinion and then we could have put it up on Patreon for people to see on, on, on dog training and everything. But I think because he wanted to learn and he was a bit apprehensive about coming at one point and the travel and all that, and he hadn't been driving for that long. And it's a hell of a commitment to come that way for a guy you know, like Stevie. He's got autism, and, and we're not talking nasty about, about him, but we've it's like me with my dyslexia. You know, I struggled in some areas, and he struggled to communicate in some ways um, the way that I'd like to put it across and show people. So that's the reason. And so, you know, sometimes things... Uh, the, the discussions were, were, were really worth discussing, but it wasn't worth putting up for all to see. So at the end of the day, um, I, I take me out off to Stevie, and I don't want Stevie to feel self-conscious by watching what, what was said or anything like that. And so I have full respect, like you say, Simon Spruce, full respect for Big Steve. At the end of the day, we put up what we will show you, and there's a lot more stuff to come. But I've been sitting through a lot of the sit-downs with him, and... Uh, he didn't really say too much because he was trying to soak it all in. And so it was a bit one-sided with me. And um, it's it's me learning to, to be able to cope with when to put pressure on and when not to put pressure on and when to shut up myself sometimes with someone who's got not learning difficulties, but someone who's got a, an issue like, like Stevie with his autism. And he was good enough to tell us he had autism. And he says that sometimes he says things that... Um, Perhaps um, people don't see it, what he's trying to say, or it comes across slightly different. And uh, he was a lovely, lovely guy, Stevie is, and uh, I, I, I respect to him for trusting me and coming all this way. And I think we got results. Well, I know we got results. It's a matter of him now continuing that. But if you've trained dogs for a number of years a certain way, and then someone says, right, now unscramble all that and rethink this way, so that can be a little bit overload sometimes for some people. And that's the skill as a, as a good dog trainer is to know when to back off. Or Stevie was really clever because Stevie said, I now need to have a break. And so he would go back to the caravan and have a break at the point that um, it was overload for him. And I take me out off to him for that because then he didn't put too much pressure on himself. Then he came back fresh. And that's why it's important that, yes, we had a, we had a good banter. We had a good relationship. We got on. Um, he was very, very polite. Um, um, he bought Sue some flowers. He bought me some um, whiskey. Um, he bought cho he bought chocolates. He didn't need to do that, but he was such a gentleman, and he was a pleasure to have here. And he was apprehensive. I wasn't apprehensive because I deal with so many different people. But once I had Stevie here, I had to treat Stevie slightly different than I treat some people, and that's not being derogative in any way. He's a lovely, lovely guy. And um, I could sit and chat with him, no problem at all. And I think he was a lot more confident on on the um, Patreon live feeds when he's come on there before, and we've had good chats. I just think he was trying to sort of soak it all in, and it may have been a slightly much too much overload. Because you, if you don't go home worn out mentally, not physically, mentally, then I don't think I've done my job. And I think that's really important. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I have to put people under pressure as much as possible to get the best out of them. But when I say pressure, it doesn't mean harsh, nasty pressure. It means you've got to you've got to push them as much as you can in that short period of time to get the dogs to a good standard. But with Stevie, it was it's, with his young dog. It was. It was because the dog was different. And Stevie wasn't reading the dog 
And once we laid off the pressure and let the dog have fun, he started seeing the dog come out of himself. So that's what Stevie learned. But it, it was a matter of having to tell Stevie not to do what he normally does. And that must feel quite strange to someone who is perhaps quite regimented in their way of thinking. And so you're doing the opposite. And so he kept thinking, is it him who's causing the problem? And it wasn't him causing the problem. It was the dog's mental state. And he had to change his, his method of training that's been successful with so many other dogs. Um, but you couldn't ask for a person who's got so much nice control over his dogs. He could take them in the field. They could stay with him. Um, they weren't barking. None of them had noise. Um, they all had nice mouths on them. Um, he's got a nice set of dogs there, and he should be proud of it. And that's what he should be proud of. He should be proud of what he's what he um, what he did. So good on Steve. And I do thank you all for the, your kind comments to him about the videos as well. We just tried to show you what we were uh, uh, sticking to. We were sticking on getting that dog hunting. Um, yes, we did a little bit of retrieving, and I saw that Steve could do all that. So there was no need to go down that road. We work on your weaknesses and not on your strengths, but you never forget your strengths. That's what it's about. Respect to Steve for the trip down here. Yeah, that's a real commitment. And to let us share his journey with him on Patreon, I thank him. Exactly. That's what that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about, well done, Steve, um, for having the bollocks to say, yeah, put the videos up and um, show people the um, dog and what we did. Now, we, there is some videos going to go up that are going to show you when when we say the dog was sticky and now the dog was looking at Steve. We're going to put them up and then we're going to show the the way the dog reacted because we showed how we brought the dog out of itself, but we haven't done in-depth why we changed the mindset of the dog and how we changed the mindset of the dog. So there you go. So wishing Steve all the best. I don't know if he's at work tonight. He may be at work tonight. Um, he was saying that he wasn't sure with the... Uh, the work situation and that's another thing worrying him he wasn't sure if he's got a job to go back to because of um the cutbacks and all that but uh, yeah i think he i think he had a good time he said he thoroughly enjoyed himself um and uh we had we had a good crack and that's all i can say um anybody else any any questions come on you can't leave me here just uh, uh waffling again surely not again, surely. Um, I put up two really nice, um, I think, podcasts with um, Ivan Balabalanov. Um, Karen said that he'd listen to them. And, uh, and and Ivan was talking to two different people, one a lecturer and um, and the, the other one um, a scientist, a guy who explained himself and explained about how the science is flawed and how misleading it can be as as for joe public because they're manipulating any findings they want to and it's all to do with funding and i just thought it was so important that you've got um ivan who is a a world champion over you know done it over, i think two or three times world championship won the world championships in his specialist sport a dog trainer who i thoroughly um recommend and yet come from two different disciplines, me, me from um, the gun dog world and him from the protection world. But he's worked in so many aspects of dog training that he's got some good insight. Now, because he's foreign, it, it does come across a little bit hard to listen to sometimes. But the people he brought on were very intelligent people who studied dog psychology and dog training and philosophy. And um, I thought what they said was an absolute eye-opener for anybody who didn't know now, I knew all this through Ivan from years and years ago of talking about it. But at the end of the day, for him to bring these two trainers, these two um, podcasts on there, I think is a fantastic eye opener. And I think everyone should share them, really. Because if we're going to fight back, we need to fight back with the science as well. And we need to prove that the science is flawed. And um, if enough trainers put up work like I do, talking about discipline and correction, and yet we don't encourage. Um, flattening dogs we don't encourage um, suppressing dogs to the point that they're just robots um, anybody can do that that doesn't make you a good trainer a good trainer can read a dog get the discipline into the dog without flattening that dog and still let that dog have its natural ability and it, us sports trainers we come from a different level than the, than the pet person now 
you all know my story where I was attacked viciously by idiots out there who just went out of their way to cause trouble. Um, I'll answer that one in a minute, Paul Crocker, no problem at all. Um, we have no problem. Uh, I, I've had to stand up and fight for the right that we use discipline, that I train dogs and I don't beat dogs and I don't destroy dogs and I change dogs' mindsets and I turn dogs around and I save dogs and I give dogs a far better life. Is it better to have a dog to have the freedom or have to keep it on a muzzle and a lead all the time? And I know even gun dogs that have taken over where the people can't take them off a muzzle and they're using a, a, a harness on the back. Well, a harness is to teach a dog to pull, isn't it? At the end of the day, a slip lead, um, they say, oh, you can choke a dog on a slip lead. You can choke a dog on a harness. You know, and yet the dog is learning to pull on a harness. That's what it was invented for. And you've got these people with, on harnesses. Um, Pierre was on here last week, and he was trying to tell you about um, his, his relations up country. They got attacked. They were walking near Labrador. Two dogs attacked them. He stepped in to protect his Labrador, and he got injured as well and is in hospital. This is the this is the side that the, the positive only side that tell me that um, you know I'm doing it wrong and yet they can't control their bloody dogs. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Or they have to keep their fur babies in the house, and they're nothing but barking idiots. Like now, I don't go after them, but they come after us because it gives them power, doesn't it? If they can attack anybody who uses discipline or talks about discipline, anybody who talks about an e collar instantly. As soon as you talk about an e collar. You're an evil barbaric trainer who doesn't know what he's doing. But the difference is they have no clue. So the idea is we need to put up our work and show it how it works. And Dougie was an absolute fine example. But why should we give them the satisfaction to teach them? Because that's what they used to do. They used to watch my site because they couldn't train a dog to save their lives. But they liked the fact that I could train a dog. So they hated the fact that, that I had a following. And it's the same as these idiots i've put a couple of videos up on youtube to keep people interested and know that i'm on patreon and it's got three or four thumbs down on every video what a sad bunch of people isn't it if they have to feel that that's what they've got to do it doesn't bother me but i will talk about it i will talk about the fact that that stupid woman in scotland is still spreading shite and lies about me um, on a regular basis someone sent me a, a whole feed of it the other day She's spreading it around, saying the only reason that she lost the court case is the, the court made a decision, a, 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 a legal f a, a, a mistake. And the only reason we won the court case is because there was a legal dispute, sh dis uh, um, dispute shown, and my solicitor won the case on that. My solicitor didn't win the case on just that. My solicitor won the case on the fact that she didn't want to bring any evidence to the court because she hasn't got any evidence. That's right. She was given every friggin' chance to bring it, and the silly old bat. She didn't, the balls to turn up, didn't, she, she didn't even want to turn up. She wanted to sit behind a screen and tell the judge what he was doing wrong, like telling everybody what they're doing wrong. And guess what? We have to move on. But how can you move on when all the time when someone flicks a video at you and gives you shit and says, oh, you beat dogs because this video shows it. There's no video out there that I beat dogs. But it's the hatred that they cause. Now, when she writes this shit, she's written it recently. She can't get over it, can she? But I warned her. I said, if you go after me and you won't leave me alone, I will mind fuck you. And that's what I've done. I've mind fucked her. And you could say, well, that's rude. No, no, it's not rude. It doesn't mean anything sexual. Where I come from, a rough area, if someone gives you grief, you give them grief. Simple as that. An eye for an eye, as they say. And I said, if you leave me and just go away, you've made your point, you'll never hear from me again. If you don't, I will plague you. And she could try and take me to court for that. But if I can prove that she would not leave me alone, I have every right to deal with her as long as it's within the law. Fight fire with fire. But she's not got fire. That's the problem. She burnt herself out a long, long time ago. She's a crackpot. But guess what? Anybody new coming into the game and just bought a dog and they go on the internet and they look at those videos that she's edited and manipulated, um, they're going to think, ah, he's cruel. But guess what? It backfires on the silly cow because there's no such thing as bad publicity, they say. Well, trust me, you don't want it when it happens. But when it 
now it's there. People flick onto that, then come onto my site and then say, I came onto your site because I saw that you beat and kicked dogs, I was told. And then I was quite surprised how happy the dogs are and how, how your clients are happy. Well, imagine they came over to Patreon. They'd see far more, wouldn't they? And that's what I'm having. I'm having people saying to me, um, can I bend your ear? Can I ask you some questions? I said, unfortunately, we had to move over to Patreon because of the fools out there. And I can't answer everybody's questions. I look after my people who look after me. And that's important. And yet, should we stop doing this live feed on a Wednesday, open for everybody who's on YouTube? And should we only take it to Patreon, just for the Patreon customers? Well, I have to bring in new people. I have to, you know, keep, keep, my, keep my calendar full with new people with problems with their dogs. And they find me because they see the videos on the Internet. And we only put up teasers on them compared to what we used to put up there. And you've got people coming on now saying, I used to watch all your videos, all 5,500 of them, and they were wonderful. Where have they gone? Well, they got taken down. And now we're on Patreon. And if you want me, you have to pay. And you have to pay a small amount. And that small amount is worth every penny, as all of you, so many of you have said on there, for the amount of volume that you get put on there with the videos and i have got probably 500 videos waiting to be edited and put up there for everyone to see but i can't do everything i can't answer everybody's email everybody's um youtube uh, mess uh, facebook messenger message looking after my regular customers who, who support me on patreon Training people who come here, training people's dogs, training my dogs and editing. It's a one man band. And like I said to you, it became such a runaway horse. Um, it was out of control. You know, I had three and a half million views, 7000 subscribers. And I know I keep saying it, but what happened is we've got new people in the house and they're wondering what this is all about. And this is about dog training. This site is about people who really have the same interest and they want to get results, and they've seen results, and they're willing to use all four quadrants. And when we talk about all four quadrants, we're talking about positives, positive training and discipline, but explaining it in a format that people understand. Dan Lawrence says, even Chris, I nearly gave up earlier training. My Cocker Spaniel, his, my, it was my first gun dog 18 months old. I'll never give up on the dog, but really need your help now. Can I contact you for a lesson? There you go. Of course you can, Dan Lawrence. Um, could you put our phone number up there, Sue, for, 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 for Dan, please? She doesn't want to, everybody. Do you know why? Because of the hatred on the Internet. So, Dan, if you'd like to contact me in Messenger or send me an email, um, could you put up my email addresses? And I don't know it, she says. Um, eh? Yeah. Do it. What is, it? is it Christopher? Okay, it's Christopher.upton1 at btinternet.com. Yeah, Christopher. And so what happens is you don't realize the effect it had on my darling wife, Sue. Why don't she won't answer the phone. The gate goes. She doesn't want to go to the gate still to this day because of the hatred and the, and, and the nasty people. And these are so-called so positive people. No, they're not. They're just people with nothing better to do in life. So, you know, every now and again, we've got to say it, you know. Thanks, John. Um, show, I'll show that. I'll put that up. Though. Thank you, John. Oh, we beat you to it. Yeah, there you go. It's faster typing. So like William said, it's too cheap. It's totally worth it, Chris. Exactly. And if, if I'm not worth six pounds a month and you're getting probably 30 or 40 videos a month going up, then trust me, um, go and find someone else because I, I specialize in gun dog training. And I was speaking to Jonas Black. He asked me to come on the other day and he's a pet trainer. And I feel for pet trainers because they've got to get results in a sh short period of time into that dog else the client's going to wander off so they've got to get instant results if if such now you can get instant results sometimes but what you've seen with me i'd rather spend longer with a dog and not charge someone for that extra time to give that dog every chance because i believe that dogs work on repetition and yes, you can change a mindset very quickly in a dog, but to put in instill that that training that will stay there, then you need to do it on a regular basis. 
and repetition, repetition, repetition is what they need. Now, for instance, if all my dogs are in kennels outside and they've all got the kennels they go to and they go there automatically, you don't have to say get in a kennel, get in the kennel, they just go there because they know what, what is their kennel. If I say to Sue, can you put that dog in that different kennel? Say I've got a bitch in season, I need to put a dog in with a bitch or keep a dog away from another dog because it's cut itself or something like that. Sue struggles like hell to get that dog from one kennel to another kennel. Why? Because they're not robots. They're not regimental soldiers. They're used to a pattern and they work to patterns and they work to repetition. And so if I say, right, okay, we're not going to put that dog in the cage in the yard while we put the others in the truck in the dog box, the dogs get confused because they go, no, I normally go in the cage or I normally go in the dog box. So the skill is when you take a dog and you use it as a gun dog, you're going to use it different than a pet dog. A pet dog has got to learn so much more in different ways, but perhaps not under the same, te same temptation as a gun dog. We put our dogs under great temptation. We need our dogs to listen to us. And if we give a command, it's got to be followed through. But that's exactly the same as pet dogs. That's exactly the same as pet dogs. Robert Jeffrey says, worth every penny and more the amount of videos and knowledge is mind blown. And get on Patreon. Thank you very much. Um, Christopher says, Patreon is value for money for you. Won't get anywhere else if you want to improve yourself and your dog. That's so important, Chris. It's about improving yourself and the dog because the videos show you. How, I don't always just show a, a finished dog. I try and show dogs in different stages. And that's where the clients come in. The clients' videos are really good because that shows you dogs with problems and how to get over problems. Uh, Brett now says um, six pounds worth every, every, every is worth it. Yeah. So Susan is now saying I've got questions. Yeah, well, Paul John asked earlier who are you phoning tonight. <laughs> who are we phoning tonight? <laughs> yeah, right. But Stuart, uh, Stuart Chuck Shank um, said, Chris, how do I encourage my dog to hunting close? Um, well, to begin with, you don't. If if you're out, you're out hunting with a dog on game, if you're out hunting on game and you want the dog to hunt close, if you're doing hedges and straight lines, the dog's going to pull on you. So you've got to get the dog to flow a pattern in front of you. Um, and the whistle is what you do it with. You turn whistle, and your turn whistle is exactly the same. If you give a command, it's got to happen. But I like a dog to flow in front of me without blowing too much whistle. If you're blowing too much whistle, it means you haven't quite trained the dog right. If you put a dog on scent too soon, the dog will pull. And you see that so many times. Um, that, that, that was a, a good thing with Big Stevie. We got 71 people in the house and 21 thumbs up. Big Stevie's dog didn't want to go wrong. He wanted to stay with him. So he's not having to shout and scream at him. But he's asking, asking him to get into the cover or hunt where he wants him to hunt. And the dog's looking at him and saying, what do you mean? So... It was important that Big Stevie's dog learnt to flow and chase. Now, would you let every dog chase? I do. I let every dog chase. Some people would say, yeah, I don't need my dog to chase. Fine example would be Peter Taylor's dog. He's Cocker. He's got that much drive. Uh, Peter Taylor's in the house. Good evening, Chris. Thank you for your comments on my video. Glad you are pleased with Harley's progress. Very pleased with Harley. But Harley is a different kettle of fish to his Cocker. And so you see the difference between it's like chalk and cheese. I can like both alike, but they're not. They're completely different. So you've got to treat them completely different with, uh, you know, like, like he said, I've been firm with that dog, the cocker, and he's not listening to me. But that's because the top cocker has been allowed to take over and they've got that streak in them. Some of them, some of them cockers are soft as soft can be and they're beautiful. Others have got that headstrong about them and that's what the older spaniel springer spaniels used to have they used to have that edge strongness about them but they didn't use to sulk they, they could take discipline and that's like today's society isn't it today's society i tell that woman in scotland to fuck off and mind her own business and she throws the toys out of prams and saying i'm abusing her it's easy isn't it if you don't want to follow me don't follow me if i if i offend you fuck off it's simple and why can't people be like that? Yeah, but if you've got a brain. If you've got a brain, my darling wife says now. If you've got a brain, a few, even a few little brain cells, it might click in. 
But if you're a numbnut, it obviously doesn't. My darling wife is getting braver now, isn't it? There was another question that you were going to answer earlier for Paul Crockett. That's all your fault, you lot. You've caused that. You've made her come out of the show, I tell you. She's, get, she's getting hard to hold down now, you know. <laughs> Phantom pregnancies for um, Paul Crockett, you're going to answer that. Go on then, what is it? Read it out. Phantom pregnancies. Have you, have, you, have you any experience with phantom pregnancies? My friend has a bitch who has experienced this three times. Any thoughts on how to go forward? Sean's Raymond, who's coming down tomorrow, says he, he had that and he got, he got her sprayed in the end. Spade. Sprayed. Spayed. Not sprayed. Spray, spray, spade, spade. Spade. What well, he's got? He's got spray. A spade. It's very spade. Well, no. I wouldn't read in what. Yeah, but uh, never mind. You're not a dog trainer, are you? <laughs> anyway, have you any experience with phantom pregnancies? Yes, I have. Um, if you if you've got a bitch that's having phantom pregnancies, the best thing you can do is bang her in pup, and then they tend to get over it. I find, but when they have phantom pregnancies, you can have all sorts of problems: mood swings. They can start producing milk. They fill out. Um, they can be a pain in the backside. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's a hormone change, and it can be a pain in the ass. But normally, it will iron itself out if you put them in pup once. Other than that, you need to speak to a vet. But I've I've, I've had it on the odd occasion, and I've had other customers' dogs. Simon Spruce, go for, go Sue, go Sue. She's giving it some. Um, Peter Piper says that many videos going up on Patreon is hard to keep up, which is brilliant. Well, you don't need to watch all of them, Peter. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to categorize them. I'm trying to give people a mixed bag. And my and my aim was to get a thousand videos up uh, before the end of the year, and then that's going. Um, I've got so many videos to go through. It's unbelievable. We've got people coming here and then I'm, I'm downloading videos, putting them up and then training the following day. And I'm actually pleased that not everybody wants to be on the internet because I just couldn't. And when someone comes here and spends, uh, like, like as long as Steve did, you know, I can't put up what was done and said and, and happened. Um, it, it may be interesting for everybody on Patreon, but trust me, I'd be on there for hours and hours. So I'm just flicking through it, looking for remembering parts, what, what went really well that we can use as an educational video and using that and putting that up. But like I say, I've, I've probably got another two, two, two and a half days of videos to look at Steve's stuff, uh, but I've been going through them even today um, to, to try and thin out some of these videos and get them, get them out there. Um, I thought that uh, Peter's Peter's relationship with Arlie is is coming on really really good. The only thing you did is he went Arlie, Arlie. Well, that's the dog's name, and Arlie didn't know what he meant. What he meant, but uh, that was the only fault I could really see. And yet, and, and other than the dog going around him a little bit, he needs to block that off and stop that, as it becomes habit forming. It's not the end of the world, but you don't really want it. You you, you want to stop that behaviour. Don't know how you find the time to do it all. Nor do I. I mean, look at my eyes lately. They are they are getting rather tired. And I think as you get older, you haven't got the same um, stamina. Um, quality rather than quantity, isn't it, Sue? <laughs> that's, what you keep, that's what you keep telling me. Quanti quality rather than quantity, darling. <laughs> I do love her. She's such a self-leveller. Anyway, it's Big Stevie. The uh, whiskey's going down well, mate. I'm better not sure how much I've drunk. Um, right, so I was listening to Joe Rogan. Uh, I like listening to Joe Rogan when I um, have a kip in the afternoon for an hour. Because, uh, like, as a dog trainer, you're up early, you go to bed late, and so I tend to have a kip for an hour at my age now in the afternoon. So don't ring me in the afternoon, you you bastards. And... Um, up the old paper round. There you go. Up the old paper round. That's been a long, long time ago since I was doing a paper round. I used to have a chopper. Still got a chopper. It's just rusty. <laughs> Haha. That's why your eyes are gone. <laughs> what the whiskey? Um, I see that Joe Rogan's had a, had, had a not been drinking for the, all of um, October, and he's looking a lot better. So I think I might go all December without drinking. All December without drinking. You're having a laugh. Trust you to pick that month, isn't it? That'll have to be January, wouldn't it? Now? 
<laughs> it's after January. But yeah, that Irish whiskey is very smooth. And it's, it's relaxation time when... when uh, I try not drink before 8 o'clock, to be honest with you. But sometimes we do start at 7. Um, but there comes a point where you, you think, well, I need to give me liver a rest, don't you? Any thoughts of creating a separate Facebook page for your patron customers to chat about training and share stories and ideas? Kind of like the forum, Max Gibbons. Good idea, Max. Good idea. I wonder if Chris... Uh, I wonder if Chris would uh, perhaps look at that and get that going for me. I wonder if Chris might think about setting up a page, a page for pay, for our Patreon customers. So because he's a admin on Patreon, Chris Deval, and I wonder if he could uh, set up a page, a Facebook page for Patreon um, members, so you can share photos, talk, and that. And it was nice, wasn't it? Um, Karen came, sent a photo on Facebook the other day, and on Facebook he was he was with um, Daniel Quinn. Daniel came here, and Daniel's phoned me and booked a day to come down here. Uh, um, remember Daniel, just before all the videos went missing, and we started Patreon, how much he helped helped us. So it was nice to listen from Daniel again. Paul Drivers, I wish I could have a drink right now, but I'm at work at 4 o'clock in the morning. Jesus Christ. You can keep that job, wherever it is. David Jones, are my fellow Patreon members dog snobs? Having read your recent post regarding trialing and English Springer Spaniels and Cocker Spaniels, do we care if we have pedigree, pedigree sprockers or cockers? Good question, David. Good one. Uh, if I get, if you have Jack's discipline, he looks at me as though to say, is that all you've, you've got, Jack's? Yeah, <laughs> fat boy. <laughs> Let me go and flush off a bird. His head never goes down is as hard as nails and that's the problem peter that's the problem that's why it's so important that if you if you don't get your training right with a dog of his mindset and he gets on game then you've got a double handful on your on your hands and, and yes we can bring him back but um I'd be, I'd be bringing him back with an e-collar and you could say well why would you bring him back with an e-collar for 30 years you didn't use an e-collar because the e-collar is a kind of way of bringing him back because then he realized you've got control of him at a distance but it's not that you'd be doing it in a nasty way. It's just that he then realizes, hang on, you've got control at a distance. Uh, so there you go. Look, isn't he, he great, isn't he? Like, good lad, Chris. And he, yes, no problem, Chris. We'll look into that and set it up. That's really good of you, Chris. If you have any problems, contact me because I'm a genius with the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexic. Genius. So, um, anybody else? Any questions? Um, Patreon with Chris Upton, it's like a family, like minded people, brilliant. And that's what's important to me, Simon. That you know, um, I put up stuff, it, it, we, get, we get the same regular people making comments. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had the 270 odd people that we've got on there, um, making comments all the time? Wouldn't it be wonderful because th there's people on there who appreciate it, but they don't get involved, and it's a shame, really, that they don't get involved. Um, but but each to their own. At the end of the day, it, it, I'd have to read so much more stuff, wouldn't I? So, in some ways, it's nice that um, that it's not, perhaps not as busy as it could be, because even looking after two hundred and seventy people is a job in itself. When people ask you questions in private and people come back to you and you answer the questions, and you can't answer everything, but you do your best to answer as much as possible. And you wouldn't believe it. Some mornings. You know, I get up at five, six o'clock and I'm, I may lay in bed still, but I'm actually answering emails and questions on Patreon and stuff like that. And it, it soon takes up your time, doesn't it? And then it's the editing. It's the editing that uh, takes up time. It's not because I have to watch the videos back because I then cut out anything that I don't think is relevant to put up. Not because You're I, swearing. my swearing, Sue says, and, and I do swear a little bit, especially when I'm agitated Especially when I'm um, excited. excited when I see something good or, 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 or I want to get results and I'm, I'm driven. And uh, so sometimes I have to sit through and just take out the swearing. That's why sometimes you see it flicker because I go, for fuck's sake, that's brilliant. And then I thought, oh, no, why did I leave that? Why did I say that? Uh, 
Yeah, you say you'd be dinsworth. Yeah, it's take me off as long. <laughs> and Dan, Dan Lawrence come back and says, Cheers, Chris. I hope you don't mind teaching a brummy. I don't mind teaching anybody from anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. It's so diverse. It's lovely to deal with so many different people. I, I tend to get on with so many people. Daniel Quinn in the house again. Good news, I hope. There you go. He said he needs to work on his dog. He said he's let it slip. But Daniel, I think Daniel, don't mind me saying, but Daniel's a, um, a, a driver for one of the big companies delivering stuff. And how many people are ordering stuff on the internet and having it delivered? Uh, it seems to have taken over, doesn't it? So he's been very, very busy with that. And obviously the lockdown as well. Um, the lockdown, I think we've all maybe having problems with further lockdown, the way things are going. Um, uh, um, let me know, are, are you having a good time on the shoots? Give me some input. Say, yes, you're having good times. Tell me, tell me, um, are you enjoying yourselves with your dogs? Are your dogs going well on the shoots? Uh, Chris, I mean, not a gun dog, but a German shepherd, but love your videos on Patreon and, and take, and take what I need. Well done, Chris. That, that's, that's great. And that's what I'm saying. I get so many people from the pet world who did come over, uh, to YouTube because they thought it was going to be a car crash and so many people want to see a car crash. And then they sent me message after message saying, I'm not a, a gun dog person, but the control and the obedience and the way those dogs love you, there's no way that you beat those dogs. And I just want to say, I'm sorry for um, all the shit you've had to put up with. That, that All that sort of stuff was good stuff, you know, because it changed people's mindsets. So it just shows, doesn't it? Sometimes you've got to put your head above the parapet and be prepared to be shot at and say, bring it on. Sean, wrote, cutting out the swearing at me. He's dreaming, isn't he? He's a freaking snowflake, that boy, honestly. He's a snowflake. He's never been beasted yet, that boy. If I beasted him, he'd never come back. He's so funny, Sean is. He's so funny. <laughs> he looks at you with those dopey eyes, like, like, please don't shout at me. <laughs> Not dopey, but slightly cross-eyed, one of them. It's like, please treat me gently. <laughs> He's lovely. He's a, such a nice guy. Do, and I tell you what, I bet he look after himself in an argument with uh, somebody in business, but he's just so polite. Uh, do many gun dog guys have a guard dog for the kennels, etc.? See a lot of thefts regarding gun dogs. I think, yeah, I got the wife. <laughs> William, she's a Rottweiler. I send her out if there's any trouble. Um, I, I, it's one of them things. I, I think you've just got to have locks on everything. You've got to have cameras and um, alarms. alarms and everything. That's what we've got. Um, and trust me. Um, if anyone went, it literally tells me on my phone and my phone's next to the bed. So if anyone actually went into the kennels, um, it would, it would give me a call because we've set, we've actually got it set to a timer in the mornings when we open up. So we know that the, the, the night times that there's no one should be going into those kennels. And at the end of the day, I, they, they, they'd see a, a ninja warrior coming at them in the dark. But we have got plenty of security lighting as well that lights up everything in the yard. I don't think anything's super, super safe. Um, you may you may have to fight people off your premises if they do come on. You don't want to, do you? But you have to air to caution. But uh, the reason I don't want a guard, a, a guard dog is the fact that uh, I don't want a noisy dog. Um, I don't want dogs in the kennel being um, noisy. Um, but I can tell you, if you went into my kennels at night, the dogs would bark. They would bark because they'd say there's someone here who shouldn't be here. Um, and, and and when one kicks off, they all yeah. kick off. So I'd be out there so fast. It was un it'd be un unreal. Um, where people seem to um, have a lot of theft is in built up areas. People go into the back gardens and nick their dogs and in remote areas as well. Um, it's all over the world. It's all over the country, isn't it? That people are nicking dogs and, I think the, the price of dogs and pe people don't even know what they're nicking, do they, half the time? They haven't even got a clue whether it's a good dog or a, or a, or a poor dog or a working dog, you know? So, there's, yes, there's a lot of theft out there. A very nimble ninja warrior. No, no, I'd be, I'd be like um, Fat Panda. <laughs> but, if I, but if I lay on you, you, you I was going to say you're fucked, but I, I, can't, I can't swear. I'd be the nimble ninja warrior. Oh, Sue so would be the No, 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 Sue, so, Sue. So, we all know Sue can look after herself. They didn't get the money out of the bookies, did they? No. Uh, David Jones says, due to the full lockdown in Wales, I said I've not been on either of the shoots I normally do. Time. Oh, what a shame, David. What a shame, yeah. Have you got the lockdown for three weeks, four weeks? William G. Wright, 
I know you have a bull in the yard. Yeah, <laughs> you've seen that one, have you? <laughs> we don't have no bullshit. Trust me, if you're in my yard at night, you've not been asked to come into my yard because my gate's locked. Trust me, <laughs> trust me, you're dicing with danger if you come into my yard at night because you'll wish you had a Rottweiler that fucking bit your ass. That would be only half your problem. With all the good photos you have, Chris, and your dogs, you could bring out a Christmas calendar. I'm thinking of bringing out a Christmas calendar, Simon Spruce. Naked one. Gundog naked Christmas calendar. How about that one? Better than Cliff Richard one. Did you see that Cliff Richard and Piers Morgan shit? That the, the life story or whatever? Why didn't he ask him the right questions? Why are you living with a McVicar? Is there any hanky-panky? Didn't, did he? He ain't got the bottle to ask him. At the end of the day, that's what everyone really wants to know, isn't it? And then he could, he could have sung, congratulations and jubilations. It's just a Christian thing to do. Oh, you can do it these days, can't you? It used to be frowned upon, didn't it? It's not frowned upon now. It's, it's the norm. It's the norm. Okay. Thought you were looking quite... What? Paul Crockett, you worry me sometimes. Congratulations. Yeah, suave, he says. He's trying to say suave. Is that the word? Suave. Kung Fu Panda suits. Suits you. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> very nice of you, honestly. Beating tomorrow, going to piss down. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I got somebody called Sean coming. And it's bound to piss down because every time he's here, I go, Sean, do you really want to come to that tomorrow? Sean, you're on here live. Do you really want to come tomorrow? Or should we fit you in next week? When it's dry, it's dry next week, Sean. We could get out in the in the vehicle next week. Listen to him. You go, no, I've made my decision. I'm coming down. <laughs> he doesn't care about me getting wet. Doesn't care about me getting wet. I'm, I, you know, next week, everyone, I'm 59. That bloody big six O's coming, you know. And I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I look back and think to myself, where has the time gone? Haven't I had a lucky life? Haven't I had a, a fantastic, wonderful life? You know, for 30 years, I've been doing something that I absolutely adore and I love. And I, I teach what I I've got a passion for. And that is, you're so privileged if you can do that, make a living and know in your own heart that there's probably, I don't know, perhaps 1% that, that may have been disgruntled about your training or, or something about you said to them about, you know, if you think, if you think you're that good, you're not that good or, you know, if you want to learn, you've got to listen, and then they've gone away with a... With a but 99% of people... So you've looked after him, says Simon Spruce. She's right, he's right, isn't she? She's really looked after me for 30 years. Um, it's a fantastic situation. A fantastic situation to be able to say that 99% of the people that come to you um, would recommend you, that, that, that they've enjoyed their time with you, that they've... They've moved on because they've trained their dog to a good standard and now they don't need to come to you, but they may come back to get another dog. And to have the support of Secret so fair play. There you go. That's that's what it's about. But at the end of the day, I've always told you to compromise in life and in a relationship, and I don't think you should compromise. I think that you should get the best out of a relationship, and I've done my best to get the best out of my relationship. I've worked at it, um, and I'm so happy with my relationship and i'm so happy with my life um i don't want to catch the virus so any of you coming down here with a virus fuck off all right keep your virus keep it up there wherever you are keep it up there <laughs> so coming down coughing and sneezing you know you keep it to yourself all right will you yeah. me and sue would like to go, go on a few more years but guess what they reckon the uh, survival rate's a lot better now because they reckon as long as you keep drinking whiskey you can keep it at bay so that's what i'm doing i'm doing what the scientists say I'm doing what the scientists say. Of course I'm coming, bloody love it. And and I'll come next week. See? See? See what happens, everyone? He's a greedy little bugger. When you treat him right, you take him out and 
it's it's the package like soul said it's not just the dog training it's the package it's the whole package um we invite you into our lives we invite you into our world and people come here and they go he is the person he is on the internet he's got that humor he's got that passion he only wants to get the best out of you and the best out of your dog and that's what it's about fourth of november how did you know it was fourth of november paul i'm worried about you paul you stalking me I can't wait to watch you drink whiskey for a week, Chris. Why is that then, John? Because you'd be there, right? You're not having whiskey, John. You, 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 you're not big enough. You, you need a bigger frame to have whiskey and be able to cope with it. I've seen the, I've seen you small guys. You've got no legs when you have whiskey. You can't walk straight. We need you concentrating with dog training. You can have them, um, those pink, pink, what's them? Pink lagers, whatever you call them, do they? You guys from up Kendall. Um, you're still on Shandy's, aren't you? I'm a Stella man. Anyway, thank Christ for that, John. <laughs> thank Christ for that. We'll get we'll get some Budweiser in then if you're if you're a Stella man. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Put that on the list, John said. Yeah, Budweiser. He's a Stella man. <laughs> get some Budweiser. <laughs> it's like Big Stevie. Big Stevie said that uh, on the last night I'm going to have a whiskey with you. But he didn't stay the last night because he wanted to um, get back because the weather was changing. It was quite, he was right, wasn't he? Um, he's lucky he went back. He didn't go back today because it was a head on wind, wasn't it? Back to Ireland. I know it's only two hours from Stranmore, but um, he would have been an head on wind into that um, Irish Sea. And he didn't want to travel in the dark as well, did he? And he didn't want to travel in the dark. So he didn't have a whiskey with us. But when he did, he said, if I drink whiskey, and we start having a session. He said, I'll drink half a bottle. He said, and I'll be asleep in the caravan. You'll knock on the door the next morning. I'll tell you to F off. I'm not going out today. So I thought, well, no, you want value for money. <laughs> Get out. Let him, let him stick to his beers. Anyway, he's not here at the moment. So it's nine o'clock. He must be He must be working. And Bill, Bill Lewis asks, do you ever see any one of the old type springers hunting machines <laughs> on shoots anymore? Yeah, I do, Bill. Um, I don't know if anyone, everyone heard that. Bill says, Chris, do you ever see any of the old types Springer onto machines on suits anymore? Yeah, you do. And um, majority of them are because they've not the trial lines. They're just working lines that they've bred through themselves. And so we do see some good sized dogs, um, some good strong hunting dogs. L Lorraine says, training session question, five months cocker puppy hunting in long grass for a blind tennis ball will show me she's found it, but will not retrieve it should i take advantage of the <clears throat> let me read that again because uh... five months ago cocker pup hunting in long grass for blind tennis balls will show me she's found it but not retrieve it should i take advantage of this ask her to sit as it is a flush yeah. no lorraine what i would have a tendency to do you want that dog to pick it um, so I wouldn't be doing it in long. I wouldn't be doing it in the, on the in the grass or outside in the woods or anything like that. I'd be doing that retrieving separate um, from from doing that, because if you get a dog start blinking retrieves, then you create a bigger problem. That's the problem. It's nothing. I, I wouldn't say it's nothing to do with the flush. I don't think you get any, gain any advantage with that. If you've got a dog five months old that's not that's not wanting to pick a tennis ball, I would say that you, you're popping into your hunting too soon and you need to get the retrieving into the dog before. Um, and so many people have realized that, but too late. So it's really important that you do your hunting separate from your retrieving. Once the dog loves to retrieve, then you bring it together. And that's important. Get the retrieving in before the hunting. So true. Uh, right, so she will retrieve a fun-based thrown ball. So what you need to do is you need to you need to find yourself um, like alleyways up a, a little passage. And at the end of the day, you want to be putting the retrieve down, turning her around and sending her for it. Um, but when you say thrown ball, it's the movement of the ball that they want to retrieve. And then when they see a stationary ball, they won't pick it. So what you need to do is keep the dog on the long line or the lead, walk the dog down the passage so it can't go left, it can't go right or up a track put the retrieve down on the floor, come back 10 feet, turn around and say, get out, send the dog, teach the dog to go out and pick it. So you're teaching the dog to pick a um, stationary object. 
by doing that, but not on grass, because the grass, they'll just put their head down and start to hunt if you introduce the hunting too soon. And that's the that's that's what so many people struggle with if they do that with a dog. Any more questions? Any more questions? Come on, there must be some more questions. Anyway, that's 55 minutes and seven seconds. That's gone really quick tonight, hasn't it? 73 people in the house and 33 people with thumbs up. Isn't that funny? 33 people with thumbs up and 73 people in the house. That means that there's over half of you who don't particularly like this, but you're on here. No, it doesn't. It means that some of you are watching it on your telly and you can't put a thumbs up. But uh, if you put a thumbs up, that sends a message to the snowflakes. We talk about discipline. We talk about correction. We talk about fun-based training. And we talk about snowflakes. <laughs> and because... I talk about snowflakes, but what I don't do is I don't go into their forums talking about snowflakes. And yet the snowflakes thinks it's acceptable to come into dog for gun dog forums and tell us what we're all doing wrong. Some of the older generation can't work out how to do a thumbs up, I think. Like some of the older generation can put a thumbs down, though, can't they? Hi, Chris. I'm new to gun dog training, and I have a sprocker. He's 11 months old. What is it? What? What? is your looks on sprockers what's your thoughts on sprockers nothing wrong with sprockers i think sometimes you get some really good blood in sprockers you get you don't get the elf uh, implications and it's like having an outcross a complete outcross and i think it can strengthen them um is is paperwork really important i don't think it is that important but if you just if if there was no paperwork out there it would be hit and miss, wouldn't it, whether you've got quality or not got quality. And at least with the Kennel Club, to a certain extent, it was an indication of the quality. I know there was cheating and I know there's manipul manipulating pedigrees and people lying, on, on, but not everybody. If you find the right sort of quality dogs and the right breeding, and that's the problem. The Joe public don't know what to pick and who to trust. Um, I know one or two very famous trainers that there's no way on this earth that I'd recommend them um, by you buying dogs off them because I've been to their houses I've been to their kennels and I've said what's that cocker out of what's the breeding what do you want it to be out of well when they then take you into the kitchen open a drawer and show you 10 empty pedigrees and 10 vets docking certificates that have been signed but just fill in the dog's name it just shows that the corruption out there is disgraceful well, when someone shows me that, guess what? I walk away and never go back. Um, I think that is a, a, an insult to doing this in a honest, credible way. And if we've got A panel judges who are on the judging circuit, and they weren't A panel judges when I went around their houses 20 years ago and they showed me that, I just think it just shows that the... Uh, the standard is is quite poor in some areas of the dog training world. Unfortunately, it's all become money orientated, and it shouldn't be money orientated. It should be for the for the quality of the dogs. We should be breeding for quality of dogs, and that's why I feel so sorry for so many people who go and buy cockers and then end up with noise. And it's not their fault. Most of the time, it's not the training that's caused it. It can be the training that can cause it. Don't get me wrong, but most of the time, it's bad genetic. It's bad breeding people breeding just for the sake of breeding if you've got a dog with noise and you're a purist you should not be breeding off that dog if it's got noise simple as that what Jarvis says if you had a quality david jones says sprocker is good trialing dogs apparently yeah i know what you i know exactly what you mean david <laughs> i think we all do um what Jarvis said if you had a quality cocker would you have a sprocker litter um well, well, i wouldn't need to would i because i mean i i i, I like I like pedigree dogs. I'd rather have a pedigree dog. A pedigree dog's going to sell better than an unpedigreed dog. Um, but does that mean it's not going to be a good dog? No, it doesn't. Um, you don't know where it's come from, do you? If it's a sprocker, you don't know which side it's come from. And it, it may have been from a guy's dog down the road that's, you know, yippy yappy idiot, and he should not have bred off it. But what I'm saying is you, you can end up with some fantastic sprockers. There's nothing wrong with, uh, 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 I mean, for instance, Big Stevie. He's got a, a Labrador with a white blaze on the front. It looks like a Labrador. 
It's got a white blaze on the front. And guess what? It's a Labrador cross Springer. It was a, a mating that he didn't, it just happened accidentally. And he sold the litter, sold them all, no problem at all, no paperwork. And that dog can hunt, cover, it can retrieve, and it can smash cover. And it's an asset for him. And when I saw the dog, I said to him, you can see why you like that dog, Steve. Would I want it? No, I wouldn't want it. The Queen's got one, or did have, apparently. If you notice that uh, Ian runs a lot of dogs for the Queen, a lot of a lot of cockers for the Queen. Um, see how I said that? Cockers for the Queen. Have you had a client with two sprock? Have you had a client with two sprockers from Yorkshire? They look. They looked okay. Yeah, yeah. We had. Um, what was his name? Come on, Susan. Lovely couple. Yeah, they were like Ike and Mike, weren't they? Yeah, um, two lovely brothers. Yeah, mm. lovely brothers. No pass. Um, there is one question, though. Um, Was that DNA proved? It's supposed to be still ongoing court battle. At the end of the day, I don't get involved in it. Um, if I hear something, I'll put it up. Um, because I believe in, you know, telling people what, what is going on if it's if it's the case. Reading into the DNA, Ronnie and Reggie, that's it. No. No, it's Ronnie and Reggie. The dogs are called Ronnie and Reggie. No. Yes, they were. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Ronnie and Reggie, no, you're right. Thank you. No, Ronnie and Reggie was um what's the name's dog from London? Um <laughs> Jason. See, the, I tell you she's terrible, you know. We have so many people about it. We have so many Jason. people. Is it was it Jay? Jay? Um Jay. No. no Jordan. Jordan, yeah. Jordan. Ronnie and Reggie's Jordan, yeah. They were, uh, they were. Um... Max Gibbons, preventing boredom with training. After three retrieves, dogs will then start to sniff around and not have the same level of eye contact drive. Keep them on a lead and only retrieve. Um, at the end of the day, Max, it all depends. It's, I find that if you've got a dog that's struggling with retrieving, go and do it on concrete. Go and train the dog on a car park. Um, with the retrieving once you've got the dog really keen on the retrieving and especially the bounce the chase and all that then then go back onto the you know into the field and you'll find that they'll get better put them back in the car after retrieving training um but guess what if you can only get four or five retrieves out of them take the four or five and then do exactly what you say put them in the car um at the end of the day try and get the retrieves in first and then once the retrieving is finished put them back in the car then bring them out and then do something else with them it was Oscar and something else, Oscar and Cody. Oscar and Cody. Oscar and Cody. Yeah, hey. Oscar and Cody. She's getting better, isn't she, everyone? Dementia's not set in yet. Dementia's not set in yet. And you've got a question from William G. Webb. He says, have you got the latest months of new ski book on an e-collar? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't bought it, William. Um, I listened to, um, I listened to the podcast. Um, Chad Mackin had, had them on there on one of his podcasts and i also listened to um brother christopher and uh what's his name the the uh, watch seller what's his name um um um, um, um who's wrote the book with a come on come on william you can help me here the watch seller come on american watch seller what's his name what's his name who wrote the book with him dog dog trainer but he actually sells expensive watches Oh, what's his name? My bre my brain's cooked tonight. Um, sorry, I forgot his name. Got Mark Goldberg, of course it is. Mark Goldberg, yeah. Um, I find that I love watching and listening to anything, but I, if you can't watch everything. You can't. It's like Ivan's videos. I keep pulling at something in my brain saying, should I download his videos? They're very expensive. Um, but he's a protection trainer compared to what I do. And yet there's bound to be things in there that I'd see and I could learn from. But do I want to spend $200 on downloading a one of his videos? And I, I don't know if I can justify it, to be honest with you. I don't know if I can justify it. Because I saw his earlier, a lot of his earlier stuff, 
and I learned from his earlier stuff. But it's got a lot, a lot of dog trainers have gone very, very commercial, and it's all about sales. It's all about um, views. And don't forget, you have got my birthday coming up as well. And I got Sue's birthday coming up. She tells me in the background. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Eh? And Christmas, and lock, and we could have lockdown as well. If we have lockdown, I think I might buy Mark Goldberg's um, book and uh, the Monks of Skeets book, and I might tap into Ivan's videos so I don't go insane sitting here knitting with Sue. She loves knitting. No, I don't. No, she doesn't. She, she, she doesn't. But she does like Wednesday nights now. She does like getting involved on Wednesday night. She tends to have a lot of Wednesday nights off, and it does make it a little bit easier. When is Sue's birthday? We can have a whip round for, 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 for Chris. <laughs> She likes Anne Summers stuff, everybody. She loves Anne Summers stuff. You know, it's just, I'm not I'm not sort of putting any thoughts into your head, but she does love Anne Summers stuff. No, I don't. <laughs> Bigger the better. No, no, no. It's not always it's not it's not always about size, it's what you can do with it. Duke Ferguson, good train. I'm not sure if you see I, I have seen stuff. I'm not sure he's into gun goes to NAPO style yet. But do you know what? It's funny, isn't it? Because if you listen to if you listen to um, Ivan and then you listen to um, Bart, they contradict each other in so many ways. It's unbelievable, but it depends who you follow. And I think if you're into protection dogs and you're into that sort of dog, you should follow both of them. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was gun dog trainers out there giving it the way it really was? Because a lot of the protection guys are giving it the way it is. Um, a lot of those guys are putting up videos and are, are educating people. But isn't it funny in the gun dog world? It's all glossy crap, isn't it? It's all glossy crap. Never show you how to get over a problem with a dog. Never um, debate about the subjects that people... It's slightly controversial with some people. Good night, Paul. Oh, my God. Paul's left the auditorium. He's he gone. He's going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so there you go, everyone. That's uh, Chris Upton. That's You've had an hour. An hour and six minutes. How about that? 64 people in the house still and 40 thumbs up. So with that, we're going to say good night to you and bollocks to you all. An early start for me. See you in the morning. What time, Sean? What time are you going to be here? Just give us an idea. Uh, Peter Piper, great night, he says, bollocks. Thank you. Um, John Wilson, bollocks to you. Robert, bollocks to you. Karen Evans, thanks. Seeing something, bollocks to you. Peter Taylor, bollocks. Simon Spruce bollocks. There's so many bollocks coming in. Ian Gaunt, you're quiet in here tonight. I never else. And Chris Wheelhouse, how did you get in here? I never seen you in here. Uh, Matthew Cloud bollocks. Christopher bollocks. Well, thanks, Chris. And, and thanks for looking into that Facebook group. It would be quite nice. And then you can all chat with each other and uh, and uh, sh share stories, share shooting, share your dog's pictures and everything. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? And and uh, if, if you could uh, make it for Patreon customers so you can look on the Patreon list and see. Julian Lee's Borrocks to you. Where the hell did you, where were you hiding, Jules? And Crank Casey, Borrocks to you as well. So thanks a lot, everyone, for tuning in. Chris Upton signing off. Feeling very, very tired lately. Um, I perhaps need a little bit extra sleep. These, perhaps these darker nights. I like these, um, I like these sunny days. When you get that little bit of sunshine, blue sky, it rejuvenates you. When you're going out in the wet and you're put, changing clothes three times. Oliver Swift, good night all. Chris Upton signing off. I thought it said end stream here. It did. Are you sure that you want to end the stream? Well, I wouldn't have pressed end stream, would I? <laughs> Don't start arguing with me. <laughs> <laughs>